All right, here we go. All right, folks, welcome back to another episode of TWIP. I am your host, Frederick Van Johnson, here to discuss a few of the more interesting stories affecting photographers this week. I'm joined by Mr. Lee Herbert of CapturingPassion.com and Mr. Martin Bailey of MartinBaileyPhotography.com. Hey, guys, welcome. Hello. Good evening. All right. You, you guys have seen the notes. You know, there's a lot to talk about in there. Um, before we do it, I want to I just want to touch on a couple of things. Lee, I was I was stalking you via your website. And, <laughs> and I was young. I, I needed the money. <laughs> I wanted to congratulate you. It looks fantastic, man. It looks really nice. And uh, and I see you got that full motion video. I never did understand how people can do full screen video on their sites and still make the page load fast. So obviously you're a video guy. So I want to ask you about that real quick. How do you, how did you do that? Um, it's actually a plugin that I bought for my Squarespace site. That um, yeah, basically, and, and they were actually funny enough. So I think it was like sixty dollars or something, and um, you can just link it to a um, a Vimeo or a YouTube page, and it'll just grab the video from there. The key to it though is to um, have the video nice and short, mm -hmm. so that when it's buffering, it's so you know. I think my Mine's only 15 seconds long, um, yeah, 15 or 30 seconds. So it, it doesn't, because otherwise it's going to be buffering and buffering and buffering. So yeah, it's um, no, I'll have to dig it up, but I can put it in the show notes. Yeah, yeah, put it in the show notes. It looks it looks really good. And then I saw also saw that you're doing that whole one page website design thing where you just kind of scroll and scroll and scroll without all the menus, like Twip, for example. How's that? How's that working? Do people like that? It's um, I I did it about three or four months ago, and I'm I'm still experimenting with it, so I'm still not sure if I'm gonna if I'm gonna stick with that because, I mean, so capturing passion, what that site is designed to be, it's basically just um, like a like a big showreel for 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 my video work clients. So you know, if I'm if I'm at a networking event and oh you know I'd like some video done, have you got an example of your work? Go check out my website. There it is. Um, but if you actually have a look sort of on the right, there's more stuff for some of the training things that I do and tutorials and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm I, I kind of I wasn't ready to commit to everything being on a single page. So you know the stuff that makes me money is on the front page, oh, and then gotcha. I'm still sort of keeping the other stuff kind of there as well. Um, yeah, so I've I've been doing it for about three months. Another three months, so six months total, and then I'll. Look at all the analytics and stuff, and decide if I'm going to stick with it or not. Well, it's a it's a good example of a, a very well done page. I would encourage people to go check it out. It's at capturingpassion.com. Go go hammer on Lee's site to make sure that it will stay up under pressure. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, just keep loading test. pages, keep hitting reload. <laughs> all right. Well, welcome to the show, man. It's always a pleasure having you. And also. Mr. Martin Bailey of Martin Bailey Photography. Martin, you are um, you're you're always traveling, right? And you're about to head out what on a Japan winter wildlife thing, yeah. right? Yeah. But yeah. more more snow monkeys. Are we gonna see some snow monkeys? What's going on? Yeah, the snow monkeys. Um, I'm actually I've just got back um, last Friday evening. I got back from the first of the two winter wonderland. I call them winter wonderland tours because the place is is amazing. But um, yeah. Yeah, finished the first one last night, and I start the next one on uh, Sunday evening. And yes, we'll be going over to the Snow Monkeys, but then heading up to Hokkaido, the northernmost island of Japan, for a further nine days of uh, cranes, eagles, and all sorts of goodies. I think you need to bring a drone out there with you and get some aerials of those snow monkeys, Martin. <laughs> hey, you, you know, after the last show, I did take a DJI Osmo with me. I ran straight to the store cool. and picked one up. <laughs> did you get one? You got one. It's your what do you, fault. What do, you think? Uh, what do you think? Uh, I think it's great. You were right about the mic, but it, yeah. it actually it's it's better than I thought. It picks up some audio. Yeah. Um, but when when audio is important to me, I'm using a, an H6 recorder anyway. So mm, yeah, same, um, same here. Well, yeah, I have but, a you know before we dive into the show, I have a problem with my Osmo that I'm I'm testing now. I'm going to record a little uh, example slash I don't know. I want to share my results of of some things I found out. So mine, I don't know if it's yours, but mm -hmm. mine and several other people online have found that your audio drifts out of sync. Over time, uh -huh. Uh -huh. with this thing, yeah, and it's funny because I did this interview with two DJI people <laughs> on Treasure Island here in the Bay Area, <laughs> and 
over yeah you know, I I haven't even put it up yet because it's like I got to sync all the the clips cuz the video from that built-in mic and from lav mics apparently <laughs> drifts out of sync Lee you can sympathize drifts out oh. of sync over time you know so you start it's in sync and by the end of the 14 minute cuz it chunks in 14 minute uh clips at the end of that 14 minutes it's like you know, bad Godzilla movie. It's you know <laughs> nobody is it's not matching. It's not matching at all in the DJI forums. Apparently, people are you know rightly so upset about it. But I'm hoping this is a firmware update. Otherwise, it's just going to be a sync thing. You know, rec- like record so, you know separately and do like a clap or something and sync from mm. that at the beginning. But mm. let me know. I would do some tests, Martin, before you go out in mm. the field. <laughs> well, I've been doing a few short clips. I haven't done anything really long with it yet, but yeah. it's great. I mean, I, I love being able to just handhold and get 4K oh, yeah. video at, the, at that quality, you know. The, and the, yeah, the, I love without, it. I love it. Yeah. 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 Aside from that, aside from that, I mean, I think the the workaround until they fix the onboard thing is obviously just to do your hand clap and sync like we used oh. to do back in what 1943 or something. <laughs> Hey, yeah. hey, hey, we, we, we still do that. You know, yeah, I, I do. I, you know, I, 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 I have Pluralize. Have you guys heard of that software, Pluralize? I have yeah. a, from Red Giant Software. I have that, and that thing, it's magical. You're supposed to just be able to throw any audio and video at it. It'll analyze the waveform and then sync everything up and then spit out a Final Cut or a Premiere Pro project for you then to go cut up. But mm. it can't sync with the Osmo because the Osmo's reference <laughs> audio is out of sync. <laughs> It's oh, like the source of truth is lying. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So anyway, yeah. so I'm working on that. And I've been doing that. It was actually Sharky James of the Petapixel podcast got me yeah. into this. Got me onto the Zoom H6. I've been using a Zoom that I plug into an iPhone. Mm-hmm. Um, but he got me onto the to the H6, and I'm loving it. You know, I'm just doing because over the years I've done a lot of audio recordings to to kind of augment my my photos. But I've I've been getting like the the cranes honking and all sorts yeah. of different sounds and just just building a library and um you know that thing's great I should have made that my pick of the week but I've I've got a I've got another thing to talk about oh, okay yeah I love I have one of those too it's it's yeah. great it's like the Optimus Prime of digital audio recorders yeah I'm, uh, it's you know yeah. modular and it just does everything it's very cool yeah hey, amazing. All right, guys. Let's jump into these stories. Uh, number the, the story number one. This is, you know, unfortunately, you could almost like set your watch by these things happening. So Google is shutting down Picasa, and also, uh, you, I want to say that they're shutting down Google Glass, but they at the very least have shut down all of the social accounts, the Facebook, the Twitter, Instagram, etc., for Google Glass. So those are gone. So, you know, it looks like. So here's a little the little lead in I wrote. So Google is pulling the plug on yet another beloved service, Picasa. The company says this move is so that it can focus efforts on Google Photos. Google has also shut down its social media accounts for the for Google Glass. So Lee Herbert, looking at this, um, you can I mean, on the one hand, you could say, "Come on, Google, you're always shutting these services down. Look at all these things you start with big fanfare, then you shut off." On the other hand, you got to commend them. They're saying Google Photos is where it's at. This is going to be the new thing, and you know why have two things and two sets of resources working on two products when we can focus all of our efforts on making Google Photos great? What do you what do you think about this? I'm I'm very curious to see how people react to this because you know when Apple does something like this when they killed off iPhoto and then brought on Photos there was a lot of hoo ha and a lot of people complaining and it'll be interesting to see if Google gets the same response I think it'll also sort of tell a little bit as to how many people are actually out there using these services yeah. so yeah. you know it's like you know when people kill you know when, if if Google killed off Google Plus um, it's not going to be like you know a great many voices cried out in agony and then would disappeared. Yeah. It'll just be like, oh, Dave in the corner is really upset. Oh well, that's, that's a shame. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Um, <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, but, so. but but I I, th- I think I think you are right that they you know we do need to give them credit that at least they're not just sort of going right. Well, it's dead. Deal with it. They're mm-hmm. going well. Look, we've moved on to something else and we're taking a different approach and. You know, in I read the announcement and they sort of said, you know, if 
if you're using it now, it'll keep working. It's just we're not going to keep updating it anymore. So if you want to keep using it, keep using it. But we're going to the future. This is how we're getting there. Come along with us. We'd love you to have you on the journey. Yeah, it's saying they will no longer support the Picasa desktop application as of March 16th, 2016. In addition, they'll be archiving Picasa web albums data at a later date while encouraging those users to convert over to Google Photos. Martin Bailey, wh what about you? Uh, it, the loss of Picasa, was it just a necessary sort of hanger on and it just needed to go? Or, you know, the, the, the other way to look at it is... is like Google alluded to in their article in the blog post, there are lots of people that are using this that have invested a lot of time building albums and keep, you know doing all sorts of things. They put their lives into Picasa, you know, and we know what I say about putting your life in a cloud service, but they put their <laughs> lives into this this app, uh, this cloud service app, and then of course Google says, "Hey, we're moving in that direction." What do you think, Mark? Well, I think it, yeah, you you just we we're obviously on the same page with that. You you don't really want to be putting your lives into any cloud service. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the ideal thing to do with with anything like this is if you want to use a service like that, then you really want to have a, a desktop um, backup and organization, something. Uh, I mean, I, obviously, I use Lightroom, and Lightroom now costs money if you go through the subscription. You're still going to have to pay for... Um, for it a standalone if you want that so you know people if you don't want to buy anything at all then I can see the, the kind of see the benefits of working with something online but you know every every operating system has something free in there for you to to organize images with mm -hmm. so you know in Lightroom if I'm going to do something if I'm going to organize something online then I organize it locally first and then upload the organized bit you know, so I, I have collections in Lightroom, and everything is organized there. So if I lose any part of my cloud or website or anything like that, or I decide to totally change and redo it again, um, everything that I own is already in exactly the same order and collections locally. So I can just rebuild it really quickly. Yeah. And I think that that's something that people tend to not do. They, they get hooked into something like Picasa and they'll say, oh yeah, this is great. And I mean, it was, it was a, a decent bit of software in its day. Mm -hmm. um, but people get into it and they, they start to put all of their emotional sort of time and you know, everything that they're going to do, they put it, in, put it in online. You've really got to do that all locally and then use those sort of services just as the, as the end point. You know, it, it's, it's really just, yeah, getting, getting things organized locally to begin with yeah, um, and then it, it basically puts a barrier or a buffer between you and everything else that could go wrong and generally at some point will go wrong. Yeah, I mean, especially with these services, it's, it's scary because it's, you know, you look at them in, in the marketing programs and the marketing push they have for these, these free services is really enticing, especially if you don't, have, you don't have a whole lot of money. You're like, you know, give us all of your photos. We'll take care of them. You know, set your app to automatically upload every shot you take on your phone to us. It'll be safe in the cloud forever. Come on <laughs> in, come on in. And then you get this email, you know. <laughs> no, like this, you know. All that stuff we said, you know, it's, you know we, we've decided to go in a different direction. So we're going to give you some time to figure it out. But all that, all that other stuff is kind of forget that. We're on to the next thing. So, yeah, so like you said... Uh, maintaining your own archives, backing your own stuff up, and then instead of using these online services as the alpha, use them as the omega, right? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> your online, your 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 home computer is the source of truth. That's your alpha. Everything else is omega. You know, it's mm. the ending. It's the you know the secondary stuff. So mm. I don't know. It's scary. What about Google Glass, Martin? Or we're talking to you. So. Yeah, I don't think you ever jumped on the Google Glass bandwagon. For those who don't know, Google Glass was this uh, is it's hard to say if it is a was yet, but it is slash was this experiment from Google Labs where they created basically augmented reality glasses that you could put on and they put a little kind of TV in front of your eye and through a little touchpad on the side you could control the UI, you could see emails, you could take pictures and video, you could live stream to Google Plus all that stuff, and then they, of course, got hit with a lot of negative backlash when they launched it because, A, it cost $1,500 to get one of these things and be part of their Explorer program, and, B, 
lots of people were doing inappropriate things with them, like wearing them into restrooms and things like that, which is, <laughs> which then begat the the term glass hole, right? So now, now I didn't make that up. That's a thing. So so now, uh, as of the re- you know we're reading this thing. This comes to us from TechCrunch and Reuters. Google has closed down the social accounts for Google Glass. So do, does that mean they're refocusing it and doing something else and they're going to rebirth it? Or does this just mean, you know, the landing gear is down and the plane is taxing into the, uh, into the gate? What do you think, Martin? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look good. It's, it's definitely a sign that they're, that they're rethinking their strategy around Google Glass. And I, I never did get, get a pair, but I, you know, I thought it was a cool idea. And if anyone's going to make that work, it's going to be either Google or Apple. Yeah. Um, I would prefer Apple, but... <laughs> but well, Apple, uh, Apple's betting on the wrist, right? So yeah. their, their yeah, version of Google yeah. Glass yeah. is, oh. is Apple Watch. Right, yeah. yeah. Apple, Apple will give you something like a Google Glass, but as soon as you see something they don't like, it just goes black. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or it gets a little outline around it and redacted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's I think it's one of those things that you know they they're obviously they're a business and they they make their they make their money in in various ways that you know not traditional you know they don't necessarily sell much it's it's mostly from ads and things um, or bullying people on YouTube but we won't get into that. Uh oh. Um, <laughs> um, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, now you know I, I I think it's a shame that they that they do seem to be pulling the plug, but, but I think that there's going to be some some of the company that will come along and and do something similar or or maybe even better. You know, I mean, who knows? We might be have Google contact lenses in a few years or something where it's just it's all embedded in a little bit of jelly on your on your eye. Can you imagine? Um, can you imagine that? You know, it's it's like the Picasso metaphor again. They're like, you know what? We're gonna give you. New eyeballs, and yeah. they're gonna do all these amazing things. Yeah, of course, you know there's a little surgery involved, but we're gonna give you these <laughs> new eyeballs, and you'll be able to do all this cool stuff. And then ten years later, yeah, we didn't really. <laughs> we're, not gonna, well, yeah. we're not gonna we're turn your you... eyes off, but uh, not, we're not gonna support them anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and when did we put the old up. ones? No yeah, more. That, that color update we were going to push out, we, that's not going to happen. Yeah. yeah, I know you guys were waiting for the infrared spectrum, but you know we we you know we're on tough times, so we're not we're not doing that anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, yeah. It could happen. I don't know. Lee, Lee, what do you think? I mean, Google Glass was it doomed from the start? Uh, and this this move of them shutting down the social accounts does this mean should we just take that as it's over, or are they just kind of taking their ball back and going to repolish it and relaunch it as something else? Well, I, th- I think they said a while ago that they sort of were stopping to support it. So, you know, the, the taking down the, the social media stuff is just one step of that. Um, it, you know what? It's it's one of those where, in fairness to Google, they always said it was a beta and they never said it wasn't going to be anything but a beta. So th- there should have been a big buyer beware for people who were buying it. Um, I, I really wanted to get a pair, but in, in my Australian pesos, it would have been, you know, a lot more than 1500 yeah. And I couldn't justify that for a toy, and at the end of the day, it was just a really mm. cool toy. Um, I mean, f- f- for me, for my use, where I, e- even just a couple of days ago, I saw, oh, this would have been great for Google Glass, is, you know, I've got a seven-month-old, and this is the first one. The just second one, you last month. See, just last month, you said you had a six-month-old. What's going on? Yeah, exactly. That's how math works. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> just check it. You know. <laughs> so he's, you know, he's doing stuff all the time. And with the first one, we're taking lots of photos. The second one, I'm sure we won't. There'll be like three photos of him, and there you go. Um, yeah. But the but the first one, you know, I want to grab photos, and he knows what the phone is. And as soon as I pull the phone out to take the photo or to get a video, he stops doing whatever he was doing. And yeah. I'm like, ah! So, you know, it, to, to have something built into your glass, you can just tap and it takes a photo. I think that was phenomenally compelling. Um, but, yeah, it, it's one of, you know what, it was beta. We all knew it was beta. We kind of hoped it would get past that, but I don't think people can really complain. Yeah, you can, but they did put a lot of marketing effort behind it, right? And they were like painting this picture of this future utopia where you could do all these cool things with the glasses, kind of like 
the self-driving car thing, right? So you could argue self-driving cars are beta too, and if they don't push yeah. it out, then, oh, it was just a beta. It didn't matter, but now they've got us all excited about these driverless Ubers floating around the world, yeah. right? But, but Frederick, if, if you're in an abusive relationship yeah. and they keep abusing you and you keep going back... <laughs> It sounds sounds like an like being an entrepreneur. <laughs> you know, it's it like they keep telling you they're going to do it, and you're like, oh no no, they don't mean it this time. It'll I be know, good. It'll be I, oh wait, they did it to me again. I know, I know. Ah, oh, you are so right. It's all right. We're 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 battered. We're the battered spouse, male or female, in this relationship. But yet, because we're addicted to technology and all these cool things, and they keep, they keep so back. it's your. To your analogy, Lee, it would be like, yeah, I got beat up again, but here's a gift. I just got a new iPad that, was, <laughs> that makes it all okay, and then it happens again. You know, so I don't know. I don't and, know. And, 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 if, and if you're okay with that and nobody's actually getting hurt, I just want to throw that out there, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. then you know, if, if, as long as you go in understanding that, hey, look, this is, this is a beta, have fun with it, it may not work tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And by the mm -hmm. way, to participate in this beta, it's fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no refunds. Yeah, 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 and no refunds. Yeah. Wow. You, you know, just one one thing to add there. You know, I think that the thing is, I I agree that you know the beta thing is there and it was always hanging over it. But most people think that when when there's a beta out, there's going to be a version one at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. No, normally. It, it does result in a in a product, but yeah, I, I it's all the thing with Google and anything they they're really pushing the boundaries, and so I, I guess you know the beta thing I, I agree with, but I I'm also thinking that you know pretty much anything they do, you know it's it's going to be until something actually comes out and they say that it is a, a final product, then I guess yeah we we don't have to. Yeah. Um, really take it that seriously. Um, but look, at, look at mail as the example, though. I mean, people built their entire businesses around Google Docs and using yeah, Gmail, yeah. and Gmail was, I don't know, is it still beta? It was beta for like like five, ten years or something. Mm. <laughs> like, it was beta forever until we finally removed that, that, that moniker. So what, you know, I wonder what constitutes bringing something out of beta in, mm. the, in the Google world. But, but you know, on the other hand... On the, on, the, on the other hand, and when you look at this stuff, so I don't want to come down too hard on Google because they, Google, much like Apple, has more money than we could probably ever even imagine, right? So they've got giant coffers full of money that they can spend, and they're spending it on interesting things like Project Loon with the balloons, like these self-driving cars, Google Glass, and a bunch of other things I have no idea about, right? So they're, they're taking some of that huge profit that they have, and they're trying to make the world better, I would say. You know, obviously, they want to have some profit in there, but they're doing interesting things with that. Conversely, on the Apple side, <laughs> I haven't seen a whole lot of that kind of stuff, if any. You know, and Apple has gigantic coffers of cash that they're sitting on, too. So wouldn't it be cool to see some experimental stuff like that come out of Apple instead of just Google and, you know, I want to see some Elon Musk-type stuff come out of Apple, <laughs> you know, rather than but just I yet another iPhone that is... Thinner, lighter, and has a better camera on it, right? But I think I think with a lot of, I mean, I'm I'm I, I'm sure Apple does a lot of that stuff. It's just they don't make it public. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but if a tree falls in the forest and doesn't make a sound, did it really fall? Right. So we don't know <laughs> yeah, what yeah, they're but, doing back there. So. But it wasn't a good tree. We're going to get you a really great shrubbery later. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I shrub. No, Apple would just call it shrub. <laughs> they would call it shrub, and then. <laughs> Like pencil. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, guys, let's move on. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk, out, talk about some big layoffs happening or that have happened over at Kelby One. All right, guys, the photography industry continues to morph and change. Last year, lynda.com was absorbed into LinkedIn. Um, and the latest big news on the education front is that Kelby One has let go a number of its celebrity status educators, including lots of friends of TWIP, and they're refocusing their efforts um, in order to serve their members better. So, Martin, you saw this, and I didn't even, you know, honestly, I'm so out of touch. I feel like if you don't stay plugged in to the net, you just miss all this big stuff. And I was mm -hmm. admittedly out enjoying the world and flying my drone and taking pictures, 
<laughs> and I didn't even see this come about. And, and someone tweeted me, and they were like, what's going on at Kelby? So I looked it up, and I saw this post on the we'll link to this letter that Kel, Scott Kelby wrote and put on the Kelby One blog. But they go into some of the reasonings behind all this. And reading that, it's, it struck me as, you know, I was... I hate reading letters like that from companies that I know and love that that go under and then they have to write the mea culpa and sorry and we're restructuring yada yada yada. But especially from Kelby because Kelby's a friend and I didn't you know I'm like oh man I hate seeing bad things or even restructuring things happen to people I I know like and admire. Um, but then you know also the other big names like I I said the celebrity educators like R C and you know, uh, Pete Collins and Brad Moore, all these, Mia McCormick, all these people are no longer there. So what do you think this means? Like to the, Martin, what do you think this means to the education, the online education space with Linda happening and now mm. this happening and with Kelby? Is it, is this the YouTube effect or is it something else? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to say at the moment. It looks as though they're struggling because, you know, I mean, you, they're, they're saying that they're refocusing and, and they're going to concentrate on that on their core values, which is the online education, and yet they're cutting the some of their best educators. Right. So you know it, they they must be struggling. Um, it is a shame. You know, I mean, Lynda.com. I, I still, if I get a a piece of software that's brand new to me, um, I'll generally go. I I don't subscribe monthly or yearly to either service anymore. But I over the years I've used them both, and I've I've found them really useful. So. Mm -hmm. You know, it is a shame. I think that the um, it looks as though they're they're struggling. I hope that they're able to get through this. And uh, and I, I would, I would love to see people like RC and uh, and you know the well, Pete Collins, Brad Moore, and uh, Mia McCormick. Just the, those four that are the ones that are listed. I mean, I I love the way RC delivers his his training. Mm -hmm. I think he's really talented. And so I'd love to see those guys either back or go off and start to, to do stuff themselves more. Um, but I, I think the thing is, any service like this has got to be hurting because there's there's a lot of competition now. Um, and there's a lot of people that are putting out videos um, with a lot of good information in just as for the marketing benefit. I mean, look at look at me with and, and, and TWIP as well. But, you know, like far, I've got 510 episodes in my on my blog that are totally free. Yeah. And, it, and they're free because it's leading to other marketing benefits, such as people turning up on, on photography tours with me. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of competition in various forms now, um, even directly training and, and other, um, either for photography or for software like Linda. Linda.com does more. And it's, it's got to be a hard space to be in at the moment. So... Rather, I mean, I would have liked to have seen rather than okay, we're going to concentrate on our core principles and cut most of the people that really enable us to do that. I would rather see a total morph and actually something totally different, right. well, you know, and where they where they could move into a space that and even create a new space. Just like um, reboot it, reboot the whole thing. Right, right. right. Yeah, I wonder how Creative Live is doing. I mean, I have no no insight, but you look at the the three big players that I I have in my head when I think about online education are Linda, Creative Live, and Kelby. So we've hmm. seen Linda get absorbed into LinkedIn. Kelby restructures, lays all these people off. I'm wonder I'm wondering is is something like this in the cards for Creative Live, or conversely, did Creative Live just get it right, you know, with mm. their business model, and that's why they're still sustaining and cranking and growing. So, mm. I Maybe don't know. So. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Lee, Lee what, do you, so. what do you think about this? The whole education space morphing and changing. I've got um, a lot of, well, I've got a, a lot of opinions on a lot of things, but particularly this one, because, um, I mean, my um, training is, is used to be my, my, my number one bag. Like, I was a trainer for 10 years at Apple, and when, when I, 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 I don't want to sound like one of those people who's, oh, I saw it coming, but I kind of, so when I left Apple two and a half years ago, my focus was on training. So, you know, my business card said trainer and all that kind of jazz, and I suppose a little bit of my story, I... I, was, but I, I wanted to do video production, but all of my certifications were in training, all of my, you know, all the pieces of paper and everything. So, okay, well, I'll go out as a trainer. And, you know, I was doing all right, but one of the biggest challenges that I found was everyone wanted training, everyone saw value in training, nobody wanted to pay for it. Mm. Right. 
Right. So everyone was like, oh, yeah, no, we'll, we'll get you into to train our staff on how to set up their iPads and we'll get you to come in and train our people on how to use Final Cut. Um, and then, like, well, well, it's this much. Oh, no, 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 we don't have the budget for that. Yeah. And or We'll get back and to you. So, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, so, you know, it, it, my personal experience in this is that, that a lot of people, everybody wants training, but nobody wants to pay for it. And you talked about the YouTube element of it. So the dis, you know, there is so much information out there on YouTube. So the the advantage is it's out there. The disadvantage, and this is the kind of stuff that I tried to talk about in my sales pitch for my training, was that, you know, number one, the quality of the training. Just because you know a lot about something doesn't make you a good trainer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to know that there's a lot of involved in, in adult learning techniques and reading a room and all that kind of stuff. Also, just the quality in terms of, like, I'm a real sound snob. So if I get onto a YouTube video, and even if it's the most amazing thing that I really want to learn, and it's some person who's just using the built-in mic on their laptop in an echoey room, I'm like, no, I'll I'll go read a book. I no, yeah, I'm yeah. no. Usually, usually that so, echo that echoey auto follow audio follows a really glitzy 3D 99 designs opening animation, right? So, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, and, and a star stuff. wipe. Yeah. <laughs> so so and I mean on like on this topic, I just got an, uh, a thing in my feed this morning that Larry Jordan, who's one of the big um, yeah. Final Cut and Premiere training houses, they're closing down. What? So, yep, Larry Jordan. <laughs> I'm a subscriber Jordan to Larry. Park. Oh, good God. You, you will get an email shortly to explain to you what's going on with uh, going forward. Oh, so, that's you know, I, I, oh. well, you know what, I was, I was thinking about this this morning when, when the show notes came through, and I, I think where it's going is, at least what I see with a lot of my friends, is... in terms of uh, distance learning, so stuff like online tutorials and things like that, I, I think that's kind of going away. I think the reason why Linda did all right was because they had such a wide range of stuff. Yeah. So I think in this case, specializing is actually not a good thing. And I'm finding that where people do still see value is in hands-on training. So things like Martin's workshops, Valerie's workshops, people actually making an event out of it, so traveling and having hands-on experience. Yeah. Right is where people see value. Whereas just the classroom sort of, you know, what we used to call chalk and talk, I, I, I think people are going to struggle to get money for that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the different modes of learning, as educators say. You know, you guys may or may not know, I sit on the board at Brooks Institute down in Santa Barbara. I'm, a, I'm the vice chair of the board down there, which is a brick-and-mortar school. And all brick and mortar schools have been suffering, right? Because it's mm -hmm. much because of the YouTube effect, the Kelby effect, the Linda effect, et cetera, et cetera. Why should I fly and go to school there when I can? I feel I can get an education online or from books and that kind of thing. But there's the different modes of learning, right? So there's the, the some people need to have their butt in a seat at a certain time and be able to raise their hand and have ask their question and interact directly with another human in order to kind of grok the information. Some people hate that and would rather sit in front of their iPad alone, you know, with a glass of wine and learn about a particular topic. Other people are field learners and they want to go out with Martin on a workshop and learn while actually creating great images. I don't think there's any one, like, mm -hmm. one mode of learning that fits everyone in, in any instance. But we're learning that that some of these older modes don't necessarily fit anymore. And I think, you know, looking at like when Linda and Kelby first came out, it was the the looking at it from a business perspective, it was hard. It was relatively hard to build a site, put commerce on that site, sell membership to videos, all that all that stuff was kind of magic. And now you can do it with a Squarespace site, right? You could you could go sign up for Squarespace tonight and be selling videos tomorrow online and have a membership library online tomorrow. So those barriers have fallen along with the YouTube effect and all this other stuff. So yeah, it's just it's interesting to see where things are today and you know where they might go. When when I if so, if I'm going to learn something Martin like with that DJI Osmo, right? I got that thing and like okay, I want to learn how to use it and what it you know what it's about and all that. First thing I did was go binge watch like ten YouTube videos from people that already had it and did their walkthroughs and unboxing and all that stuff. So by by the time I got mine in hand, 
I felt like I already knew everything about it. Yeah, I was like, mm. I turned it on. I already knew that. Oh, I got to unlock the gimbal. I got to do this, and you know, be careful of unlocking the base because it'll fall off. You know, <laughs> all that stuff I already knew. But but I'd I'd make the argument that again in terms of the value in training, and you know, I'm a trainer, so I'm you know, I've got a I've got a dog in this race. Mm -hmm. Um. Is that so? You went and watched ten YouTube videos, whereas if you and I mean, you, I know you're you are very time poor. Mm -hmm. So if you if someone came to you and said, "Hey, look, you could spend you know an hour watching ten YouTube videos that are kind of covering what you're doing, or you could spend ten dollars and spend ten minutes instead of an hour getting the same information," and and that's sort of the selling point. And unfortunately, I think. Kids these days um, are, are happy just to do that one hour instead of spending a little bit of their pocket money and you know getting the the information. Yeah, I, I hear you. But it's it's also you can't discount the fact that it's not just the the being able to get uh, a concentrated dose of information. It's also on YouTube. There's also the the component of these are just average people. These aren't mm. polished. You know, no, no offense to the trainers, but these aren't polished yeah. trainers. These are just, this is the dude next door that turned on his camera and is recording his experiences. So you get that level, that level of honesty that, mm. yeah, yeah, maybe honesty is the wrong word, but you get that level of some kind of cinema verite. It's rough, and it's rough yeah. on purpose, and you learn more that way because you're able to connect more with that person. But on the other hand, if I want to learn, like right now, I'm in this mode of, okay, I need to learn how to fly my drone better. I'm not going to try to learn that from YouTube videos. I want to go find a site that, or someone or a workshop or something that's going to teach me how to do it the right way because I'm not going to, you know, it's, it's something that's that important that I want to learn how to do it instead of trying to figure in blind man my way through a bunch of YouTube videos to figure it out. So, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, there's, there's different tools, right, and different, yeah. there's different tools for every job and there's different people that gravitate towards different tools for every job. So I don't know. It's uh, it's interesting where all this stuff is going. Where, what do you, so Lee putting on your trainer hat again? Fast yeah. forward, you know. Let's just say I was gonna say ten years. Now you just say five. Fast <laughs> forward, <laughs> fast forward five years into the future. What does education look like? Like online education in particular. What do you think? I think um, well, I mean, if you go five years, it'll all be VR, and <laughs> yeah. you know, you, you, so we'll you be know, sitting you, in classrooms you, 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 again. <laughs> No, you, you'll, you'll be sitting on the toilet with a headset on. In a classroom. <laughs> Why would the toilet be in the classroom? Oh, you're, oh, you're virtually in the oh, room. Right, right, right. Virtually in the classroom. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. No, why would you virtually be in the toilet? That doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like five years. So, it's, so I'm, I'm actually talking at the moment with um, a media school um, uh, which is overseas, and they're looking at getting me to do some training for them. And so we're, we're looking at two things. Uh, one is some advanced Final Cut Pro training and motion training, and then the other one is camera technique. So actually, how do you move a camera for video, and why do you do a you know a sweeping shot or a low shot or a high shot and all that kind of stuff? And you know what, what I'm struggling with for building this this uh, curriculum is the Final Cut stuff is easy, you know, because I can just share a screen and you know click here, click there, do this, do that. But the hands-on stuff, it's literally hands-on. So, you know, the the best I can come up with at the moment is right. Well, I will show you some clips that I've shot, and here is one thing happening, and I've shot it this way, and here's another thing happening, and I've shot it that way, and you see why this way works and that way doesn't. So. Like you said, I think it depends on what you're teaching. I think yeah. some things lend themselves to remote teaching, and other things you can teach them remotely, but there's no substitute for hands-on stuff. Yeah. Um, so I think I think it's one of those where as as YouTube gets more and more powerful, um, the stuff that can be taught remotely, there will be far less money to be made there, yeah. um, if any, and. I think where the industry is going is that that there'll be you know you'll charge a fair bit more, but you'll give a hands-on experience, and it'll be a more of an more of an exclusive experience for hands-on. You know what I would pay for uh, on, and maybe maybe you Google Google Tube or YouTube is working on this, but wouldn't it be great if you could say you wanted to learn I don't know Final Cut or some some app or something? Um, wouldn't it be great to have a 
get a curated experience. Right now you can do you can do playlists and all that stuff on, on YouTube now, but wouldn't it be great to be able to say, okay, these people have gone through and found the very best YouTube videos that cover these topics and put them together and I can go, you know, I can go watch those. That's a cool idea. You know? Right, so like a, a curator that's that's going in and sifting through. It, there's they have this for apps in the App Store because the App mm. Store has the same issue, and they have people that go through and say, "We found the very best ten apps this week for first person gaming or something like that." And you don't have to go through and kind of blind man your way through it. You just go to their list. Wouldn't it be great to have something like that for YouTube too? I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, let's uh let's move on. We got one more story to get through. We're gonna take another quick break. Uh, when we come back, you're going to learn how to ta- how to turn small potatoes into millions of dollars. <laughs> All right, guys, we are back. Photographer A. Bosch recently sold a photograph of a potato for $1.5 million. Yes, a photo of a potato. And uh, <laughs> I put a little thing in there. So uh, <laughs> I want to say this joke, but I'm not going to say it. Anyway, the story goes that Kevin uh, and a wealthy businessman, a, f- a friend of his, were hanging out, having a few glasses of wine. His friend saw this photo and said he had to have it, and then ultimately bought it for $1.5 million. Martin Bailey, <laughs> do you have any friends that you could drink wine with that you could like, you know, bring over to your house and show them the photos on your wall back there? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, you know, that, that one back there, that one in the middle, that's $3 million. Oh, that's only three. Yeah. You dropped it down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, but you know, I mean, I, I've got mixed feelings about this. Um, it, one part of me is saying, you know, if the guy's good enough friends to be over your house drinking wine with you, just give him the freaking photo. Um, and the other, the other thing, yeah, the other thing is, yeah, all power to him. If I could make a million and a half dollars for a photograph, I'd do it. You know, and and I'd take all of the flack as I'm laughing all the way to the bank. Um, I, I was actually it's it's cool timing because I was actually I was while I was on the landscape tour in Hokkaido at the beginning of January or middle of January I I found I saw this um, just all it was was the top of a hill the brow of a hill covered in snow and a dark well a lightish grey sky and I, I made this photograph that was literally just there's probably 2% difference in luminance between the top of the hill and the sky and you can just see this line and I'm I was joking to the to the group saying here's my three, 3 million dollar photo and I was thinking I'm using 3 because I think that that's how much the Rhine photo shot uh, yeah. sold for a few years yeah. ago yep. um and I mean obviously a part of me actually does quite like that a part of me would love it if someone offered me 3 million dollars for a photo um but yeah I mean if a Bosch can can get that for a for a photo yeah, all power to him. Um, I would love to. I mean, the time will also tell. I mean, the guy's already got some some. Um, he's got the he's got his chops sort of in. He's selling. He's doing work, portrait work for, you know, top celebrities. He's he's already out there. It's not like he's a no name. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the people, someone that buys something like that from him, they're they're buying his name. They're buying his brand. Mm-hmm. There, there is value in that, but. At the end of the day, it's still a spud, right? <laughs> it, is. it is a photo. You guys saw the photo. We'll, we'll definitely link to this in the in this in the blog post. But it's a picture of a photo, and it's his signature. It's a Bosch's signature sort of black background, you know, with the image featureless black background with the with the image in front. But the image in front is a a disembodied spud. I don't know, Lee Lee Herbert. What what do you think of this? Where can I find me some rich friends with lots of money and no taste? And add some, you got to add some wine into that too. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they can afford to bring the wine themselves. Yeah, yeah. God, I'm not yeah. spending money on them. Yeah. Uh, Martin said it all. It's you know this the, the, this guy's already got a name. So you know you're not buying a photo of a potato. You're buying a photo of a potato by this guy, in the style. And there's obviously. You know, some very wealthy people who see value in it, and and as much as it pisses me off whenever I see something like this, it's like you know what? If if you can do something, and there's people out there who see a certain amount of value in it, power to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's a uh, 
Yeah, I, I, I'm on the fence a little bit, Martin. I hear you. You're like, you should just give that to your friend. But on the other hand, Martin, if you came over to my house and you saw one of my pictures on the wall and you're like, Frederick, I'll give you $500,000 for that. And I'm, what's going through my head is Tesla. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I, mean, I could get a that, Tesla for that. <laughs> And that, you and can get us all Teslas for that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's kind of why I'm 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 going both ways because you know I mean I it it maybe it depends on the friend maybe that's a mercenary thing to say. Um, I've got some very wealthy friend wealth wealthy friends, but you know I think I still think if they came to my house, I probably would just give them the give them the photo. But yeah. I having said that, I mean you know it's I. When I saw, first saw this, I started to think about Pepper Number Thirty, you know, the the Edward Weston photo, mm -hmm. and that is, I mean, it, it's a Pepper, and but it, but that image is actually beautifully lit, and I still, it's still probably one of my favourite photos, and it, it's it got a few similar qualities, um, but it's still a spud. <laughs> <laughs> well, a hang spud on, is I, a I've spud. I've got an interesting take on it. So, because I'm just I'm curious about the point in the relationship that he has with this friend of his. Because, you know, I'm I'm sure all of us have got the situation where we've got cl people who started out as clients, and we've built up relationships with them over the years, and now they're mm. friends. And so, you know, at, you know, at the end, of, yes, he's 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 a mate of yours, and he's coming over for a drink. But at the end of the day, taking photos is. What you do for a living, and that is how your relationship began. That may not be how it is now, but like, I mean, Martin, you've sort of said, I mean, at, at sort of on what level of the friendship scale is mm. someone where they're your friend, so you're just like, hey, take the photo. Whereas, you, like, and also, I, I'm curious, is like, did he ask for the money first, or did like he, did the friend say, hey, look, I'd really like that photo. How much do you want for it? Yeah. And he's like, oh, you know, you can have it. He's like, no, 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 I'll give you, you know, I'll give you a million for it. It's like, yeah. well, okay. You know what I might have done? I might have, I, yeah, you're right. It depends on the nature of the friendship, Lee. But what I might have done would be, you know what, you want to pay me a million five for that? I'm going to take that million five and I'm going to invest it in this week in photo and build a network <laughs> out. And then I'm going to give that million five back to you, you know, in five years or ten, whatever, you know. <laughs> so I'll look at it as an investment. And as a thank you for your investment into my company, here's your split. <laughs> 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 That's it. Done. Everybody's happy. They're getting their money back, you know, maybe. And, <laughs> and he's got his split. So I don't know. Interesting. All right, guys, let's move on to the picks of the week. Remember, you guys can recommend anything to the TWIP Army as long as it is related to photography in some way. Martin Bailey, what's your pick of the week? Okay, so I've got a couple, and I've got a couple because I know one of, well, both of them are pretty old. It's not new, new news or anything here, but over the weekend I watched the Finding Vivian Myers uh, movie, and I... You know, I'm sitting there on Apple TV thinking, what should I watch? It's just come up here in Japan in the new new releases. And I thought, you know, how interesting can that be? I know that the Vivian Meyer photos are are beautiful. Um, but I thought, how, how interesting can that be? And I watched the trailer, and even more beautiful photos came up. And I thought, I've got to watch this. So we sat and watched it, and it's an excellent documentary movie. Um, it's It's almost an hour and a half long. And I honestly was thinking that the, what what how can they make it an hour and a half? It it was over. It seemed like five minutes. It was so interesting. So much stuff in there. So if you haven't already seen uh, the movie Finding Vivian Myers, then go and watch that. Um, the and other that's thing on, that's on Netflix, you said. Um, I watched it on on Apple TV. Um, oh, I'm okay, not sure. Nice yeah, um, I'm I'm not sure if it's uh, if it's on Netflix, but. Uh, yeah, and that probably will depend on the country you live in as well anyway. Right, right. Um, the other thing was I've just brought, you know how you, go, you do workshops and, and you meet people with cool gear and you come home and buy it? Yeah. Well, yeah. I've, been, I've been using the Black, Black Rapid straps for many years. A couple of the single straps I had before they released the double strap, I was using crossed over, and then the double strap came out and I bought that. Well, a, a friend who, who joined my, um, my workshop last week, uh, well, for the last two weeks, had one of the new Black Rapids Sports. Um, this is this is a, a guy named Jerry Abbott. I haven't got his 
um, permission to use his name. So Jerry, if I've just offended you, I know he listens. Um, if I've just offended you, I'm sorry, mate. But um, <laughs> it's out there now. Um, but Jerry was showed me this the strap because it's got this this new um, strap that goes under your arm, and I've got black on, so you won't really see that. But this it goes under your arm so that it stops the black the the strap sort of digging into your neck. And I just thought that that was just a nice little addition. So I bought myself a new Black Rapid strap. Um, it's, it's the Black Rapid Sport, um, I think it was called. Uh, yeah, the Sport Sling camera strap. And what's the, what's the price of that, Martin? Um, I probably paid too much. I think it's like 80, just under $80 from the Black Rapid site. 79 something, I think I thought I saw. Um, I played a little bit more because I bought it on Amazon here in Japan and they charge you a little bit extra because they speak English and can order things from overseas. Ah, the translation <laughs> fee, got it. <laughs> cool, excellent picks. Yeah, I, I think I don't think I've seen that Vivian Meyer movie yet. I'm going to find that. I think I'll... Yeah, uh, it's that definitely up. worth a watch. Excellent picks, Martin. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Lee Herbert, you're up. What's your pick of the week? So I've also got um, a couple, um, although, yeah, one and then just something that I saw. So my pick of the week is the x right Color Checker Passport video. Um, Look at that. So now, actually, I put the wrong link up. I do apologize. That's actually the X X Right Passport co Color Checker Passport for photography, and this is the new one for video that I'm picking. Okay. Um, so the one, but the thing is, the photography one works just as well. So if you if you are just going to do photography, go out and get the photography one. If you're doing video, go out and get the video one. Um, I've got a review that I wrote about it coming up on F Stop Lounge uh, in in a couple of days. I'll put a link up there. Basically, what this is is you hold it up in front of your cameras when you start shooting and then there's a really cool plugin you can get for Final Cut Pro called Color Finale and Color Finale is for color grading and all that kind of stuff but the beta version of it allows you to basically just click the four points around all the color blocks on the color checker and then it gives you those color like a, a chart on top of it you make sure it's on top of it you click match and it will just white balance it for you nice Nice. So, if so just like, just like with the raw photos, like if you're doing a model shoot, you put one of these, you know, a, a color checker in the scene of the first shot, and now you you have a again a source of truth that you can color balance yes. against, right? Yeah, and it is, uh, I mean, it you know, just the thing by itself, it's also got, you know, white, gray, black, and it's got a, a focus thing on the back. Oh, nice. uh, but it's really small, so it's really easy. It's also made out of pretty hard plastic, so it's pretty robust, so I've got no worries about just chucking that into a pocket or a, a bag or something and keeping it with me. And particularly if you shoot with different types of cameras, so I might be on a shoot with a Sony, a Canon, a Panasonic, and a Blackmagic camera, and trying to get those to color match in post can take so long and this is really, really good. It's not 100% yet because, like I said, the, the, the plugin's in beta, um, but it's pretty much like eight, nine, nine times out of ten, it, it's pretty damn accurate. Right. So definitely, definitely recommend going out and getting one of those. My other kind of pick is um, I got invited last week to go to a presentation by Phase One mm. to go check out um, their new 100 megapixel back for their medium format cameras. I gotta look that up. Jeez. Now, there there are not enough livers in my family that I could sell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You you know you have neighbors, right? <laughs> if I lived in an apartment building, maybe. I like Grant. I didn't look that hard online, but I was trying to look online to like how much this thing cost, and I couldn't really find it. Yeah. And you know what they say: if you need to ask, you can't afford you it. You can't. You can't afford it. No. But the pre the presentation they had um, Christian Fletcher and um, Peter, I've forgotten his surname, and Tony Hewitt, some really fantastic um, landscape photographers from Australia, some of the top guys in the industry, um, come and present, and they were showing some of their photos and. Let me tell you, when you like, I was like, oh, megapixel war, it's all a bunch of rubbish. But when you see that, like, a, a, this beautiful landscape image that they've taken, which the image itself is beautiful, and then they go to 100% crop, and you can see sheep on the mountain. Ugh. Or when they take a photo of a penguin, and you can zoom in and see individual hairs, it's. Oh, look, they have a zoom yeah. scale on the site, too. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. look yeah. at this. <laughs> oh, Check that out. So, you know what? I think I Martin, see cells dividing. <laughs> yeah, Martin, when you sell a $3 million 
painting, sorry, photo, when you sell that $3 million photo, um, can you lend me a couple of hundred so I can buy one of these? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! You yeah, can see yeah. you can see the the detail in this penguin's eyeball. I mean, that's mm. yeah, that's crazy. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, but you're gonna pay for that. <laughs> oh boy, you're gonna pay for it. Yeah. Wow. I could just sit on the site all day and look at these images. <laughs> this is crazy. Look at these. You got it. We'll link to. Oh my God, this is great. They're like, <laughs> they're like, thir- they're like a hundred shots in every shot that you could just crop out. <laughs> like, uh, for, like, for, for 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 Frederick's family, I apologize. I didn't tell them to sell the house. Oh jeez, <laughs> I don't think my house would pay for one of these. <laughs> that's Peter not... Eastway, That's that, That's the Peter that presented. Yeah, that's right. All of his images. Oh, good grief! Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's a little bit. We need to find out how much those cost, Martin. That's the <laughs> That's a that's ridiculous. <sighs> yeah. See, you can see the photographer lust coming out when you can zoom in <laughs> on an eyeball on a penguin in a crowd of penguins and see the detail but, in the eyeball but, of the penguin. But Frederick, it's not about the gear, is it? No. Oh yeah, it is. It's about all of it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, just because I have a show called All About the Gear doesn't mean it's not all about the gear. All right, uh, great picks, you guys. Um, I have a pick, too, this week. Let me bring it up here on the screen. Here it is. Okay, so this is a site called masterclass.com. I discovered this. I think it was even through a Facebook ad or something. But I discovered this. In this, I wanted to put this as a pick of the week, not only because Andy Leibovitz has a course that's coming soon in here, but the way that they built these courses is... Amazing. They did a really good job of these things, and they're not just your typical, you know, uh, person standing in, or person in front of a computer doing screencasts or, you know, nothing like that. These, like, the one that I purchased was the uh, James Patterson Teaches Writing, and they've, they're, they're, Lee, you be proud, because they've shot these very professionally, um, and it's almost like you're sitting down having a, a whiskey with James Patterson, and he's just telling you how he, what his process is. You know, it's like, oh, wow. yeah, I do this, and I sit in this room, and yeah, I write all my books on pen and paper, on yellow line paper, and I hand it to my assistant, and you know, he's cursing, he's just talking like he'd be talking <laughs> to his grandkid or something. You know, it is, uh, it's crazy. And I, this one I just found out about that Andy Leibovitz teaches photography. That's got to be crazy. I showed this to Valerie, and the first thing Valerie said was, she's wearing a Fuji. <laughs> 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 so, so I thought, I wanted to put this in the show because I thought, you know, considering the conversation that we had earlier about the state of education and, mm-hmm. like, what those folks at Kelby are going through, I would love to see someone like R.C. Concepcion come out and do a course like this, you know, where it's just... A one, it's glossy, it's awesome, it's not crazy expensive. I think they're like 90 bucks to get one of these things. And it's real. It's different than what the training that we've seen so far. And, you know, with their fame and their followers, they could launch something like this relatively easily. So I thought this was cool. I thought people would, uh, you know, get something out of it. So definitely go check that out. It's at masterclass.com, which is a great URL. Um, uh, the only one that I can vouch for so far is the James Patterson one. I've, I've purchased that one. It's great. But they've got Serena Williams teaches tennis. James Patterson teaches writing. Christina Aguilera teaches singing. They've got Usher teaching singing. They've got, you know, all these people that you would never have access to teaching you how to do the thing that made them famous. So, <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, it is, it's definitely kind of cool. All right, uh, guys, we're at the end of another episode of TWIP. What projects are you guys working on? Do you have coming up? And where can the TWIP army go to keep up with you, Martin? Yeah, like I say, I've, I've just finished one, the first of my two Japan wildlife tours for this year, and I've got the second one coming up this week. Um, the 2017 tours are already sold out, um, so I can't just give you a link to that. But, That's um, crazy. you know, the, if you... All of my tours have a tile on a on a workshops page. Um, so if you go to mbp.ac slash workshops, you'll see details of everything that's coming up. And the next one that is actually going to be a, a pretty exciting tour, but uh, it's it's not the cheapest tour I've done. It's that's in Greenland, and the reason for that is because pretty much all of the um, the moving around is done by zodiacs or helicopters. So cool. so it's it's a pretty cool trip. 
Oh, that's um, cool. That is yeah, cool. So, but we've we've got some spaces on that still. So if anyone wants to join that, uh, you can. Yeah, we'll put it. We'll put links in the show notes. But that's at mvp.ac. Yep. MVP, mvp.ac slash workshops? Yeah, that will get to all of it. Um, okay. that you can go directly to the Greenland with slash Greenland 2016. Okay. So do you do you feel comfortable telling us how much that Greenland workshop is? Because you kind of had me at, you know, yeah, helicopter. Yeah, um, it's, it's like, it's like 7000 just under $7,000. Well, that's not um, bad. Yeah, well, it's, it's it, a percentage it's, of what yeah. my my uh, my back that Lee made me buy is going to be. <laughs> yeah. well, you, oh, you should... think of the photos you could take on the trip with that Ugh. with that camera. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, you, you know, guys, I've I've actually I've just started a podcast series from the first of my wildlife trips, and I've I've shot just shot two weeks of wildlife with with two 5DS R bodies, and. And, you know, it's not a wildlife camera. It's a 50 megapixel camera that everyone is is pigeonholing as landscape and still life and all of this. Yeah. And I'm I'm really enjoying blowing all of these myths out of the water because I've I've come back with some amazing um, photographs, all at 50 megapixels. And even if I have to crop them a little bit, I've still got almost twice what I've got what I get from my 7D. So uh, I the 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 megapixels, you know. I, whereas I agree, I, I did a, a, a craft and vision photograph magazine article years ago called the, the myth, what was it, the myth of um, megapixels or something like that. Um, you can upsize images if you haven't got many megapixels, but there's nothing like having those megapixels and actually be able to print really big mm-hmm. with um, like these, these images on the wall behind me. I mean, the detail in in some of these photos, the 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 one of the Himba people there at 50 megapixels is pretty special. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I'm sitting there thinking, mm, 100, I I could do it. That. But, yeah, uh, that's interesting. Yeah, that the whole megapixel thing is it's almost like, you know, it, it, it's the difference between yeah, perfectly good enough and mm. great, <laughs> you, mm. know? Mm. you know, or insanely awesome versus yeah, it's good, it's good enough. You know, mm. it, it does exactly what I need or like zooming in on a penguin's eyeball, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, yeah. it's a big difference. It's a big difference. Yeah. So yeah. cool. All right, that's very good. All right, uh, Mr. Lee Herbert, what about you? What's coming up, and where can people go to keep in touch with you? Um, to keep in touch with me, um, most of my stuff uh, will be going up on the Facebook page, which is Capturing Passion Studios. Mm. Um, it's not just Capturing Passion, Capturing Passion Studios. Capturing Passion was taken. Okay. Um, and so in terms of stuff coming up, I've got a photo walk that I'm going on with um, Fuji and Think Tank in Sydney in a couple of weeks' time. So that's on the 27th of February. So um, that'll be cool if you're in Sydney come along. We'll, we'll have a good time. Um, other than, I don't really have a lot of uh, public stuff that's coming up, so I thought I might just plug something for a friend of mine. Yeah, um, so Ken Lyons, who's been a guest a couple of times for Valerie's show, um, he is doing some training in Adelaide. So if, you want to, if you're anywhere near the Adelaide area of Australia and you'd like to improve your photography, uh, again, the, the hands-on stuff is really good. He's a, he's a fantastic teacher and a really good um, photographer as well. So Ken Lines is uh, Ken, K-E-N, and Lines is L-Y-O-N-S. And if you just Google that, you'll find his, um, his site and all of his details. Okay, cool. I'm going to put Ken Lyons workshops in the show notes, and we'll find cool. it and link to it. Excellent, guys. Very good show. You know, this is a... <clears throat> excuse me. This has been one of those shows where you know the hour just flies by. We, it's as we record this, we're 13 minutes past the hour we intended on ending at the hour. But I think honestly, I think we could have talked about that first story um, mm. for a while. You know, the Google, and then that second story has legs too because it was you know about education and where all that stuff's going. It's uh, it's going to be an interesting year. So thank you guys for coming on the show. I appreciate it. It's always a pleasure having you both. And uh, this week in photo listeners, we are at the end of another episode of the show. I want to thank Fresh Books for their support of This Week in Photo. Be sure to visit our website at thisweekinphoto.com. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook. And if you're watching this show on YouTube, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And with that, it is time to take that lens cap off. <laughs>